What's up everyone? Welcome to part one of a new series where we look at the basics of TensorFlow. So the goal of this series is to start at the absolute beginning and get a very good fundamental understanding of how TensorFlow works and hopefully work our way up to more complex models. So in this video, we're going to start with the most basic example and look at linear regression with TensorFlow. So let's get started. So the purpose of this series is to get a fairly basic and fundamental understanding of how TensorFlow works. And we're going to take it step by step, starting from the beginning, doing the most basic examples and working our way up to more complex models. I know there's probably a ton of intro to TensorFlow tutorial series out there, but in my opinion, you can never have too much of the basics. The better we understand these fundamental ideas and concepts, the better we'll understand those more complex models, the fancy ones we see people sharing on Facebook and Reddit, and all those cool bleeding edge models. So we're going to start with the most basic example there is, and that's linear regression. We're going to take a bunch of XY points and we're going to fit a straight line to it. Normally you wouldn't use TensorFlow for this. You might use something like NumPy or SciPy. But again, this is going to be a nice basic introductory example. And before we begin, I just want to mention where I'm getting a lot of the information and example codes from. So there's this GitHub page called Americ Damien. I hope I'm saying that right, but they've got a repo called TensorFlow Examples. And there's a ton of explanation and example notebooks and code that go through all the basics of TensorFlow. So again, I'll be referring to this and some stuff from the TensorFlow website itself. I'll add a link in the description, so go check it out and you know proceed at your own pace if you'd like to. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the code. So to follow along in this series, we're going to need TensorFlow. And if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, then just go ahead and install the CPU version. And that's just going to be pip install TensorFlow. If you do have an NVIDIA GPU and you feel like it, go ahead and install the GPU version. I've got tutorial videos for Windows and for Linux. I'll add links in the description and little links up in the top corner. And we'll need some other packages as we go. For this video, we'll need matplotlib. And if you want to follow along in Jupyter, then also Jupyter. And both of those are just pip install matplotlib, pip install Jupyter. All right, let's get into it. I've got my new notebook open and I'm going to start by importing tensor tensorflow as tf. We'll also import numpy as np and we'll import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then I'm just going to add this just to make our graphs look a bit little bit nicer and be formatted as svgs. Next, I'm going to define a few hyperparameters. So the first one is going to be the learning rate. That's going to be 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 in our case. And the number of epochs or epo epochs is going to be, um, we'll do 200 for now. Next thing I'm going to do is define some training data. So I'm going to first define something called n samples. And this is going to be the number of training samples we've got. And for linear linear regression, we really don't need that many, so we'll do 30. Then let's um, create our our x training data. So train x is going to be mp dot space. So it's just going to be a bunch of points um, just in sequence. So we'll go from zero um, to 20, and there's going to be n samples of them. Now we'll create train y. And since we're doing linear regression, we're just going to create some data along a line and maybe just shuffle the points around so they're not directly on the line. So we all know the equation for a line is y equals mx plus b. So what I'll do is I'll give it a slope of, let's do a slope of three, and we'll just multiply it by x. So that's going to be our train x data. And then I'm going to add some noise to it just so it's not points along a straight line. So what I'll do is 4 times np 
dot random dot rand n and we'll give it n samples. And now, well, first I'll go ahead and run that and let's just take a look at this data. So I'll call plt.plot, we'll plot train x, train y, and let's just do dots in our plot. And let's call plt um, show, just so we can look at this stuff. So here's our data. You can see it's roughly a line, but since we added some random numbers to it, we're, we're not getting like completely right along the straight line. So the form of our equation is basically just 3x. So um, if I go ahead and plot train, train x, and then we just do three, um, three times train x, and we'll just do a normal line in this case. You see that this line pretty much approximates it. So now what I want to do is try and fit this data to a line using TensorFlow. So now I want to briefly talk about how the process goes for fitting that data. So what we need to do is we need to define our X data, our Y data, and our training value. So in this case, it's going to be the weights and the bias. And actually, the weight is just going to be the slope, and the bias is just going to be that y offset which in our case is zero so we need to start by defining all those things so the first thing i'm going to do is define capital x and it's going to be tf dot placeholder and what we're going to put here is well we can just put a float or um you could put float or you could do like tf dot float 32 either one will work Next we'll do our Y. So again, this will be tf.placeholder. And we can just call tf.float32 as well. Next we also need to find the, the training weights and the training biases. So we're just gonna do capital W and that's gonna be tf.variable. And we need to sort of initialize it so we need to pick a value for it. So we're just going to pick a random number. So np.random.randn for a normal distribution. And if you like, you can give it a name. So we can call it weights. And it's really just going to be one value. It's just going to be the slope, which in our case, it should be, should be three. So the next thing will be the bias. So we'll do, um, we'll do capital B. And it's just going to be the exact same thing. So why don't I just copy paste it? And in this case, we'll call it uh, bias. So those are our values that are going to be inputs and our training values. So we need to define everything up front. And the next thing we need to do is create the graph. So it sort of defines what the computation is that TensorFlow needs to do. So for our linear equation, the, the graph is pretty straightforward. It's just that equation y equals mx plus b. So what I'm going to do is we're going to call it our pred for prediction. And it's really just going to be x times the weights plus the bias. That's it. That's the equation right there. So you can write it this way or the other way you can do it is say, basically use the built-in TensorFlow function. So like tf.add, we would add, um, well, it's gonna be some quantity plus B. And then what we're doing is we're multiplying X and W. So you do tf.multiply X comma W. So you could do it either way, um, both will work. And I'm not sure where one would benefit you over the other, but um, for now, I'm just gonna go with this one, but I'll show you that both will work. So we've defined our equation or our graph. The next thing we need to do is define the cost function. So the cost function, you can think of it as something TensorFlow is going to try and minimize and it's gonna be playing with the weights and the bias, so W and B, 
in order to find the lowest value that it can. So for linear regression, I'm just going to be sort of taking this from, you could get it from Wikipedia or they've got it on TensorFlow website or the notebook that I'm referring to. But the cost, cost function is going to be tf.reduce sum. So it's going to reduce the sum of this thing here. So I'm going to write it just in plain math without using the tf um, functions built in. But we're going to take um, pred and we're going to subtract it from y. And then um, we're going to take that whole thing. Oops. So let me just highlight it. We're going to take that whole thing and we're going to square it and then we're going to divide it by this quantity 2 times n samples. So this is our cost function. We're going to be trying to minimize this thing here. And you can see pred, we've got um, w and b. So we can play with these values to try and minimize the cost. So the next thing we need to define is the optimizer. So this is going to be, in our case, we're going to be using gradient descent and we're going to specify a learning rate and the thing that we're going to minimize. So the optimizer is going to be equal to tf.train and then it's going to be gradient, I'm just going to tab, yeah, gradient descent optimizer. We're going to pass the learning rate and we're going to specify as specify what we're going to minimize and in this case it's going to be the cost so we've got our graph defined our cost function defined and our optimizer defined so now all we got to do is kind of run this thing in a loop and basically get our trained values out of it so i'm going to go ahead and run this cell and the next thing we need to do is initialize all our parameters or all our variables so we'll call it init and it'll be tf dot global global variable initializer. So we'll run that, and now we need to go down into our tf session. So up until this point, we've only defined what the computation and operations will be, but we haven't actually computed anything. So all computations need to be done in a tf session. So that's what we're going to start here. So we're going to use the with syntax. So with tf.session with a capital S as sesh. First thing we're going to do is initialize the value. So we're going to call sesh.run and we're going to run init. So now what we're going to do is create a for loop and we're going to loop over the number of epics we defined and we're going to run our optimizer. So that for loop is going to look like this. So we'll do for epic in range epics. And what we're going to do is we're also going to loop over our X and Y data. So we're going to do another for loop. So for um, X comma Y in, and we're going to zip up our train X and our train Y data. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run the optimizer and we're going to feed it this X and Y data. So we'll call sesh.run and what we're going to run is the optimizer. Then in order to feed it the data, we're going to specify the feed dict and we're going to create a dictionary where the X is going to be X and Y is going to be y. So as this loop runs, it's going to be optimizing w and b to try and minimize the cost. So this, as we run it the way it is, we'll, once we're done, we'll get the correct um, w and b values. But let's say we just want to poke in and see what the values are as we iterate and go through our epics. So the way we can do that is we can just add a little if statement. So if not, the epic and if we divide it by let's say 20 so oops if not epic divided by 20 so every 20 epics we want to um, do a print statement check what the cost is the weights and the biases are so let's go ahead and compute the cost so we can do sesh.run and what we're going to run is our cost function 
and we're gonna feed in so feed dict it's going to be our x is gonna be train x and y is gonna be train y and then the weights we'll just do little w that's just gonna be sesh dot run we'll run capital w and then b our bias is gonna be um, sesh dot run capital b and now I'm gonna go ahead and print it and I'm gonna use a f string which is a Python 3.6 thing but instead of having format we can just put the variables that we want to print in the braces so um, the epic the epic is just going to be um, epic and I'm just gonna format it a little bit so we'll do 0 4 D then the weights are going to be well actually first we'll do the cost so C so that's gonna be um, just the cost well I called it C let's format that also so we'll do form four decimal places then we'll do the weights so that'll be W dot four F and finally the bias will be B dot four F so this should work so I'm gonna go ahead and run it so we're getting our epic our cost and our weights so pretty much after the first few epics we go from 40 down to 12 and looks like it kind of stops at around 12 for the cost function but you can see that it's pretty much converged on the correct weight value b should be around zero so that looks about right so yeah looks like it's working and that's basically how it works for a real simple case like linear regression and now just to sort of check the final results what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and plot the data and our trained values so to do that first thing I'll do is plt dot, dot plot and we'll plot the original data so that's train x train y and let's just do dots now um, I want to plot the trained lined yeah so in order to do that let's get our final weights and biases so our final weight we'll just call it weight and that's going to be sesh dot run we'll just run uh, capital W the bias is going to be equal to sesh dot run capital B and yeah that's all we need so let's come here we'll do plt dot plot and we'll plot train x and then we need to take our weight and bias and basically compute the line so it's just going to be the weight times um, train x plus the bias value and we'll just do a line for that and let's go ahead and show that so yeah we're going to run the training again but it doesn't take that long and I'm running on my GPU, but if you use the CPU version, it pretty much runs the same. This computation really isn't that intensive, so CPU or GPU doesn't matter. And yeah, you can see we're getting a straight line. We're getting what we should be getting. So the weights are pretty much three, and the bias is pretty close to zero, and the noise kind of skews it, but you can see visually it's a pretty good fit of the data. So that's going to do it for this video. This is a very simple, very introductory example, but I hope it kind of shows you what the basic workflow is. We're going to define all our variables up front. We're going to define the graph. We're going to define a cost function, and then we're going to define an optimizer. And then we'll start our TF session, and we're going to compute or basically run our optimizer to hopefully converge on good weights and bias values. So like always, if you've got any questions, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. In the next video, we'll proceed with another example, a more advanced example. Hopefully, um, maybe we'll jump into an MNIST example, a basic convolution neural network. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.